But today we do have a guest speaker. We've got Sid, um, who will be speaking about Canto NFTs. Hey guys, great to see your, uh, uh, yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, Sid is from Neobase and uh, it will be able to take us through well, everything he's got in store for us today. Uh, Sid, hello. Can you hear me all right? Cool. Am I audible? Yes, absolutely. Um, cool. And do you want to get your your screen shared? Let me get started. Um, so, hey, guys. I'm Sid. I work with Neobase. We're a dev shop. And we have been contributing to Canto and its ecosystem since Genesis. And one of the main things we shipped last year is Blank Rasa, the Canto NFT marketplace. So let me just give you guys a quick overview of what we built and what you guys can leverage for your hackathon projects. I think after that, we can take a brief look at how we'd go about deploying contracts slash minting websites as required. So at Blank Rasa, the first thing to note is that we auto-index all ERC721 and ERC1 on perfect contracts on Canto, which means that once you've deployed your NFT contract on Canto, you don't need to do anything else to get your collection listed on the Blank Rasa market. We recheck every 30 minutes for new collections on chain and keep adding them in as we find new ones. So what you see here is pretty much all the collections on the Canto network that's ever been created. You can view every single collection that's been out there. Let's take one for example. Um, let's say you've deployed a new contract, right? And you can see your collection on Blank Rasa now. So what can your users do with the collection now? So they can, of course, browse all NFTs. They can filter them by listing status, price, individual trades, for example. Um, you can also, we also have a sweep functionality where a user can go and sweep a collection where they can buy up multiple NFTs from the same collection in order of cheapest listings. And finally, you can also view all on-chain activity around the specific collection, such as any recent sales, have these NFTs been transferred around, um, has there been any new listings, any new offers, and so on. So for any NFT marketplace, there's essentially two main user flows. There's listings and then there's offers. So one a user who owns an NFT can come get on this platform and list their NFT for sale for a specific price on the market. And to a user browsing a platform can come and see a specific NFT that he likes and he can make an offer to go buy that NFT. So first, let's take a look at a flow for listing a specific NFT. I'm just gonna go to my users page and I'm gonna look at all the NFT that I own. And there is one main thing to note here and that is the creator fee. So this is a royalty fee paid out to the initial collection deployer um, on each future secondary sale. So let's say you deploy a contract and these NFTs have been minted out and someone sells that NFT to somebody else at a later point in time, you can still enforce a way to get back some share of that sale back to you as the creator. And this can be enforced through on-chain royalties. And if anyone from the hackathon needs any help with setting up these specific royalties, feel free to text me on any of my socials, we'll help you get it sorted. Now, on the other side, well, let's say I switch to a different user uh, trying to make an offer for the specific NFT. Uh, very similar, we can offer a certain amount of Canto um, and the transaction goes through. And now it's on the owner's um, side to accept this offer or reject it as per his decision. But as an interested buyer, you can raise as many offers as you want, essentially. Um, on top of this, there's also some secondary information that we index and show for each net NFT. So we show some of the trades. Is there a rarity percentage associated with these trades? Uh, and the full on-chain history of each NFT. When was this minted? Has this been moved around? Um, and finally, something we saw briefly earlier, the users page. This is almost exactly the same as the collections main page, except this is from the perspective of a certain user. You can use this to browse yours or other addresses, profiles on their NFTs. And if you hold a CID, the Canto Identity NFT, you can also customize your user profile, your description, maybe add a banner picture. Um, additionally, you can also pin certain NFTs as featured 
to showcase to other users who might want to visit your profile. On the flip side, you can also hide specific NFTs from the from your profile as well. So now that's pretty much plan crosser. You can come in, create a collection, you can trade on it, you can make offers, and you can make listings. So let me take you guys quickly through the process of creating an NFT collection on Kanto. Um, there's a couple repos that I want to show you guys. Um, I'll link these rep repos somewhere on the Telegram possibly so that it's accessible to everyone. But what we have here is two repos, one for the on-chain contract that you need, and the second is a model UI that you can fork and deploy using Vercel, AWS, whatever provider that you like. Um, so let's look at the contracts first. Let me go to this. So I don't want to go through each line of code, but at the end of this, what I want is for even the most complete beginners, they should be able to just copy this code, change whatever they need, upload the metadata that they need, uh, make a mid website for their collection and get it listed on blank class with the right social links. So the easiest part of writing the contracts for NFTs on EVM chains, like Canto, is that organizations like Open Zeppelin, they provide standard contract implementations for most use cases. Uh, this is something that was talked about yesterday as well. It's a great resource that everyone should refer to. Um, we are importing stuff from Open Zeppelin as well. Um, but here, um, the three main parameters that you want to essentially fiddle with on the contracts for any starter NFT collection is the max supply, um, the mint price, and the name and the symbol. Essentially, this is kind of all you need to change around in the contract. Um, the max supply is just the total number of NFTs in your collection that you want minted. The mint price decides what a buyer must pay to mint your collection of Genesis. Uh, finally, you'd want to change your collection name and symbol here, of course. Um, but one main function that I want to look at um, would be safe mint. Yes. So let me give you a quick rundown of what's going on here. So what this is essentially doing is pretty simple stuff. It is first checking if the user is paying the right amount to mint your uh, specific NFT. And second, it check is, checks if the collection's already been sold out or uh, meaning users have already minted all available NFTs in the collection up to the max supply that you specified somewhere here. And if it clears these minor checks, it mints a new NFT to users' wallets and increments the token counter. And it keeps going on until, of course, the max supply is reached. Um, let me go back to this. So essentially here we are importing the RC2721 standard from Open Zeppelin. But in addition to that, if you notice, I'm also importing some additional modifiers. This is not all the modifiers that are available to you. Uh, I welcome you guys to go check out Open Zeppelin. There's a lot more cool stuff out there. But this is the most basic stuff that you're going to need. Uh, the first is ERC721 enumerable. Uh, what this does essentially is adds the functionality to allow for the enumeration of NFTs. What does this mean? Um, it just means that you can refer, uh, it just means that you can keep track of the total number of NFTs stored in the contract and provides a method to essentially access this number and list all the tokens in the contract. And this is useful um, in the context of um, a front end, like a marketplace where you want to list down all the NFTs of a specific collection. And I also use ERC721 URI storage. This, for example, just gives you a couple easier methods to manage your token URI or metadata. Um, this is a good time to talk about what metadata is. So in your NFT, essentially the image that you, um, that you associate with an NFT or let's say a media, like a video, an audio, uh, audio clip, all of this is what we essentially call metadata. And there is something interesting to know about what you want to store on chain and what you want to store off chain. Uh, with regards to NFTs, usually the NFT contract only pretty much maintains a link to its metadata, which is essentially what you see here, the base URI. It could be a URL to an S3 bucket. It could be a URL to a Google Drive link with some images. It could be anything. Um, it can consist of image. It can consist of audio, video, so on. And this is usually stored off-chain as uh, storing large data objects like media can be very expensive to do on-chain. And there are a couple of good options to store your metadata off-chain. The best and the standard one that people use is called IPFS. Um, so essentially what IPFS is, is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, data storage protocol. So what IPFS does interestingly is instead of referring, referring to files by their location, 
like how you'd see on URLs on most servers in the web two world. IPFS identifies files, identifies files by their content. When a file is added to IPFS, it is essentially hashed and it generates a unique fingerprint that they call a CID, which is used to refer to the data. This means that the content itself determines the address that is used to access the file, ensuring that the content you retrieve has not been tampered with as long as you're using the same CID that you requested. Uh, there are other protocols that can help you with this as well. One is called RWAVE. I'll share some docs for each, um, but I prefer is usually the easiest way to get this going. Um, so yeah, so next step would be, how do you deploy this contract? And sorry, how do you deploy this contract? And how do you connect the NFTs to the metadata that we are hosting parallelly on IPFS? For deploying your metadata to IPFS, you can use a couple of tools or something called IPFS CLI. Um, but usually for the beginners, I would say you can just use something called Pinata. Let me see if I have it open. You can come out here, you can upload whatever data folder that you want. And if you want something that is easy to use and plug and play with the contracts that I'm giving, uh, you guys can just upload a folder called metadata. And let me see if I can go inside this. Ah, so inside this, essentially what you'll need to do is, um, just list down all the individual JSON files or images that you want to associate with your um, NFTs and just label them as 1.png, 2.png, and so on. Uh, now, once this has been uploaded, you want to essentially copy this base URI of the folder and come back to the contracts repo. Let's go to the deployer script, which deploy the contract. You can come back here and essentially set your base URI. This sets the base number and as the new NFTs keep getting minted in, number one would use 1.png from the folder, two would use 2.png and so on. And each NFT that gets minted will be assigned metadata images sequentially essentially until all NFTs are minted and all the metadata images on IPFS are accounted for. Now to deploy these contracts, you can follow the readme.md. Um, you'll need one prerequisite, you'll need to install Foundry. Um, Alice, I've added some instructions on how you could in, uh, install Foundry. And the next part is just following along exactly with the commands. You want to forge install to get all your dependencies. You want to do forge build and you want to do forge create RPC or this command. So let's talk about what are the different parts of this command, right? So the first is you'll essentially need to pass in an RPC URL. You can look at docs.canada.io. They usually have a good list of public RPCs that anyone can use. And if you guys want something that supports higher loads, there's a team called Ansible working in Canto who provide a lot of good, very good uh, RPC infrastructure. And the second thing is you would essentially want your private key. Uh, pretty easy to get this. You'd want to essentially go to your MetaMask and um, I think there's a place to uh, pull up your account information and you should be able to copy your private key directly. And you'll essentially point to the right NFT contract create and go on. So I'm going to run this final contract deployment transaction off screen as uh, so you don't want to expose your private key online. What this is going to give you is a transaction ID and a contract address and you should be all set in terms of, terms of the contracts now. Let me see. You should be able to check this on tuber.build. This again is an explorer that we maintain for Canto. You should see that there was a transaction 23 seconds ago and this specific NFT contract was created. And so, as I said, our indexers on Blank Cross are on every 30 minutes. So you can check on blankcross.com. You can go up here, type in your collection name. And as soon as it's ready, I'll welcome you to come in and raise a verification request for it. What this does is you'll be able to set your collection banner social links, any description, do you want to feature any other links as you require and so on. Um, so now parallelly, you'll need a minting website. Essentially, once your contract deployed, you want somewhere where your users can come in, look at your website, and if they like it, they'd want to connect your wallet and mint a couple of new NFTs. So for that as well, I have a minimal like mint template that you guys can use. So it is using Next.js. Um, Again, very easy to set up. I left the designs and the components up to you guys, but the main functionality of calling the mint transaction has been wired up. So essentially, after you've deployed your contract and 
you checked your transaction, you find your contract address, you come back here to UI, you update your contract address. And this is essentially where you'd want to change your mint price if you modified it to be anything other than 0 0.01 Kanto. Um, another thing to note is anywhere you see ETH is usually referring to the native native uh, token of the network, in which case it's just Kanto. Um, let me see. Again, pretty easy to set up repo, pretty easy to build and run. Run install, install your. This should open up a mint page. Um, again, I've left the components and designs up to you guys, but this is the main essence of what the mint page is supposed to be. Uh, you essentially come in, you click mint, and you're able to mint a new NFT on your collection. And we'll wait for this to go to success. That's confirmed. And if you notice, I've minted a new transaction, a uh, new token number two to my address. So we'll make all this code available on the new base GitHub. And I'll get these links posted on Discord, Telegram for you guys to get started. Um, if there's any questions or anything regarding this, I'm free to help. And I'm also available to, uh, to help you guys async on the Telegram group. So, yep. People can catch me that as required. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ted. Um, yeah, do you want to pop your uh, your telegram in the chat or your Discord in the chat so that we have yep. it? Amazing. Yep. Cool. So that's just at Sid V at Sid Vig or S I D V I J. Um, just so that anyone watching the recording as well can uh, have access to that. I'll also post that uh, around as well um, if anyone wants to get in contact. And yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> essentially that. Also, I think there was just one question in the chat. I think earlier when you were talking about RPCs, AJ was asking uh, for the website to just be repeated again for gotcha. uh, the, yeah. Here you go, AJ. I just posted the link on the chat. Uh, but I'll make sure to put all of this on the GitHub repo so that it doesn't get lost uh, from this chat. Perfect. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, um, that was a quick overview of everything. Uh, I hope you guys found that really, in, uh, really informative and helpful. Um, we finished a little bit early, but that's no problem at all. So, um, Sid, thank you so much for coming and speaking. I'm going to quickly go over uh, a few little bits of uh, details and reminders. Uh, feel free to hang out, uh, but if you also need to drop off, that that's completely understandable um yeah so everyone who's still in the audience um just to recap we've got another workshop starting uh i believe in about an hour or so so please do come back and stay tuned for that one um and yeah if you guys haven't signed up for the hackathon yet or registered um you can actually i'll i'll just share the whole hacker pack and then you can get um What's the word? Get uh, all of the information in one. So this is the hacker pack. Please cl click on that. It will have uh, the registration link, I think, inside if you haven't registered yet. Um, there will be links to the Telegram group. That's where we'll be communicating there. So please come along and join in. Uh, say hi to everyone. Um, and of course, you'll get all of the workshop recordings and the resources in this hacker pack too. So just, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just go into there. Otherwise, you can reach out to me in the in all of the usual ways. Um, thank you so much, Perk of the Toad, again. Love the username. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much once again, Sid. And thank you all for joining us. Um, I guess I'll see you all in an hour or so. Bye, everyone. Bye.